John and Jim were both on your dad's staff, who would he bark at more? Jim. <laughs> I don't Me. know. <laughs> Are they correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you were both on your dad's staff, who would he have to oversee more? He already told me that you would run the offense and you would run the defense. Mm. And special teams. And special teams. He would be the special teams guy. Well, I got more to do. I mean, you know, it's, it. it's like we used to cut the grass. I was always cutting the backyard, which is three times as big as the front yard. I don't know how that works. How we got that resolved? Yeah, no, we resolved that. Right. that. Why is that? If he's the professional athlete to be, why would he have to cut more grass? He didn't. He didn't. First of that all, that was the problem. You bring up the problem. The problem is you got to, here in Ann Arbor, back in Ann Arbor on Anderson Avenue, our front yard was about like this. Postage stamp. The backyard was like this, and it was on a huge hill. So the way we did it is every week you cut the grass. One would do the front yard because he had the short side. The other one would do the long side, and then we would switch. And their memories were such, they had a problem remembering. It was amazing <laughs> how many times Jim had done the backyard last week. It was just incredible. And then pretty soon, it's a wrestling match. <laughs> Fine, I'll do it. Here's the deal. I don't here's, remember that. <laughs> here, here's, what, here's, here's the way it happened from my perspective. And I, this is pretty accurate. I, uh, I put my hand on the Bible and, and say the same thing. That when I first started cutting the grass, I really liked cutting the grass. I liked I like cutting it, and I like, I like cutting it all. And then John wanted to cut too, oh, um, come on. so that I was. Do, <laughs> hey, he had me doing the back, <laughs> you and I was it? doing the front. And then that, that went on for a while. And then finally, I, I kind of got like, man, I got all this stuff to do here too. I want to start this cutting is, the front. Is and you close. cut the back. I'm not saying he's the Bible and everything. This it's is, not. It's not. It's not committing a sin or anything. <laughs> but his memories a little. <laughs> so here's another example. Here's another example. Like, there came a point where he didn't like me touching his stuff in our room. No, that's not what, that wasn't the reason. <laughs> you didn't like me touching your, you had a you had a new record player sound system, Wi-Fi, that you got for, uh, not a Wi-Fi. I never had a record player. What do they call, uh, what do they call a, uh, you had that's a. That's why we live with. He wasn't the neatest guy. He had guy. a record you player, and he, guy. Did, he did not want me touching his record player. It's like Step Brothers, don't touch, touch my drum set. He did not want me touching his record player. So he put I don't even it, remember having him. He said, here's what we're going to do. You're going to stay on your side of the room. I'm going to stay on my side of the room. Don't ever cross over. So he put a piece of tape down the middle of the room. That part's true. <laughs> the issue was that there was a hallway that came into the room, and you had to go through my side to get to his side. So he could come on my side and touch whatever he wanted or walk on my side. I'm like, hey, this isn't fair. You know, we, why is the tape going this way? Like, you get to be on my side. And he goes, well, I have to walk through this side. So he kind of, he, out, he outsmarted me a lot of the times as, a, as growing up. That's my perspective. Was there like a path, what is it called? No, the access pa path, like you have like a driveway, no, someone has to another person. It was just yeah. a piece of tape. It ran from the window to the I remember, the I remember his, his stuff, his stuff, his clothes, he wasn't the neatest, we were the neatest, were I you the neatest guy? We weren't the neatest no, guy ever. His stuff would spill over everywhere, and I liked, I wanted to keep his stuff on his side of the tape. That's how I remember it. All right, who can sweet talk mom better? We, you can't sweet talk. <laughs> There's no sweet talking mom. No. Okay, does mom have a softer spot for one of her two sons? She's soft on both of us. Yeah, she's very loving, very loving and supportive. It's and very, deep. very, def very, very defensive too. Would you say? Uh, I would say that no there's, 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 a, great, the there's a great part. saying, like, and I use it all the time with uh, in football, which is, um, "What you do speaks so loudly, we cannot even hear what you're saying." That, that's Jackie Harbaugh. She, it's what you do. You either you either got the, the lawn cut or the weeds pulled or the <laughs> right. or the or the snow shoveled. Right. Or you did not, you know. And she did not want to hear how, how choppy the water was. <laughs> just, just dock the boat. <laughs> yeah, right. am, am I right? I mean, that's, that's right. there was there was expectations. I, I think that's beautiful, but I think the dad has a different answer to that question. I really don't. You just told me that your wife definitely had a soft spot for Jim. I said that. And then Jim <laughs> could get away with more. Is wow. that on record somewhere? Wow! Wow! I always suspected it. I always suspected it. <laughs> <laughs> Who does Joni's kids say is their favorite uncle? 
You're asking me that question? I'm asking them first. The okay. I don't know about favorite uncle, but I do know Joni's favorite, who Joni's favorite brother is. There was a lot of tough times between you and Joni. Jim, Jim was tough on <laughs> Joni. You know, I was there for Joni, picking up the pieces sometimes. But Jim, Jim now Joni's the toughest of the three of us for sure, and I give Jim the credit for that. The, the thing I this recall, is a this is a classic middle child. Anybody, anybody that's watching this who is a middle child can understand the, the, the bullsmith that John is the older child is is laying out here, just like sometimes the. The bullsmith that the that the youngest child, I mean, they all like try to funnel it back toward the middle child. So I mean, I guess it's a you just have to you have you would have to have been a middle child to understand this dynamic. The, the one thing I would like to know is how many times <clears throat> when we were when Jim was five years older than Joni, so she came five years later, and it was always he would come to me. We could have never gotten away with that. You know what would have happened if we'd have done that? And he would always turn on her and uh, and uh, then we felt we had to get even and poor Joni took the that took was me the, that was me saying that I think it was yeah <laughs> all I can say is I was fighting for my life at all times I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting blamed for everything Come on. I'm getting Come blamed on, by the older child I'm getting blamed <laughs> by the younger child and I'm like I mean you're in you're in you're in you know self-preservation mode I mean you're trying to the, you're trying to survive a lot. <laughs> is there something that John did that to this day you still take uh, the heat for? Mm, I, I pretty much took the heat for <laughs> <laughs> Let me say this, Joni, okay? So we would drive, we would drive everywhere. We would drive out to, we drive from Iowa all the way back to Cleveland. We drive, we never got on a plane really ever, not that we were paying for tickets. And so we had, we had, we had a car and they had a back seat and we, had, we would even up the back seat and you couldn't really cross the line, but then Joni came into the equation. And she had to take up some space. And I, as I remember, Jim felt like he should still have a half and Joni and I should be on the other half. The way mom and dad solved that, and it was adamant that that's the way it should go, they would let Joni go to the front seat, right? And then she would get to lay across mom and dad. Now, she was small enough to be able to do it. And Jim and I were like, why don't we get to lay across mom and dad's lap <laughs> in the front seat? <laughs> <laughs> when I remember on those trips, the 100-mile rule. We had a 100 mile rule. We'd be driving along, and for about the first 50 miles, you know, it was good. They were quiet and they were getting along. And then about the last 50 miles of that 100 mile rule, it would get a little chippy, right? That's it. Pull the car. Hit the brakes. And I had a, not a, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and who, who configured it so Jim was always sitting? At oh, you say that, you say I didn't. You okay. say I was a part of that. You couldn't make contact. <laughs> made you but I couldn't make contact. When, when, you you when, you when you reach over, when you reach over the, you were out of reach. And John would be right over there. And John would be over by this door, right? And I go, that's a fact. Bang! And, an, and get him right about the it's another one. He, <laughs> he, he was smart. He can figure things out. And then Joni was well. right in the middle, and I spared nothing with her. I gave her one. No, you didn't. You gave her a little. It was a little tap. It wasn't a bang. Never got It was a little tap, and then I'm trying to get over here. And I'm in the driver's seat. That's how I I'm remember. Just I'm John. I'm just and I about, can't get the Think gym. about it. Think about it. You're in a car. Now you can't tell me that it's easier. It's easier there or all the way back here. Okay. Look I could. This. I could. I could. <laughs> that I can speak to with 100% accuracy. He could connect right on the floor. <laughs> but I, it's just it's foreboding. You know, you're so you're you're so smart. You're so good at like it's, like you would have been a great chess player. You would have been a great like general. We played chess. You, know, you <laughs> played chess all the time. You, you just you could think things out yeah, like man. that. You could configure things. You know, it was, it was it was it was foreboding for you to be a great coach. And, that, then, and then we would and then we would start again, and you'd almost look at the speedometer and say we're about at 92 miles. We're coming up to the hunt to the, the, the hundred mile rule. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me add. Like he, he was my boy. You asked me who who did my parents like better than the other. You know, um, they were incredible. At they would they would tell they would say to John, Hey John, you're you're the first son. You're, the, you're, you're my. <laughs> he still you're, does that with the grandkids. You're grand my board. Yeah. You know, I love you're you my, the most. Yeah, you're Just my don't favorite. tell the other kids. <laughs> and then he would come to me, Jim. Boy, so proud of you. My 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 son. He goes, you know, you you see, you're my favorite. Just don't tell John or Joni. <laughs> and then he would do the same with Joni. And then I tried to do it with my kids, you know. And they they caught on to me. Um, and then they say that's they say that's the same thing. Papa says. <laughs> so Papa says to all the We went for it though. We got to admit, we went we bought that. <laughs> I don't remember ever being told that. 
<laughs> it comes out. That's a, that's a lie. That's, that's, that's a I'm lie joking. because I overheard I'm it one time. I was <laughs> around the corner one time, around the, on the steps, spying on you guys when you guys heard that. I will say that, to their credit, though, the one thing that our parents, Genius. one of the many things they did, they made us feel like we could do anything. Believed in you, us. You, they believed in us all the time. Yeah, they, they cracked us on the head every now and then. They straightened <laughs> us out. They sent us to our room at 7 o'clock at night or whatever the case may be. But they always told us we could do anything, we could be anything. We just had to work hard. We just had to do the right things. Okay, so then that's the very last one. Jack, if they weren't both going to be coaches, what, when John was a little boy, did you think he could do? And when John, Jim was little, what did you think he'd grow up to do? Mm. The, the John thing is, it goes to, to mom. She always felt from the time he was in the first grade that John was going to be a lawyer. And then eventually after in the law for maybe 10, 15, 25 years, he would go into politics and someday he would be a very, very- John specific. F. Kennedy. John. Like, yeah, I think, I think she mentioned that. I think she <laughs> might have mentioned president. <laughs> she president. Had, she had, president. She had ambitions. <laughs> she had great ambitions. Senator Arbaugh. Kennedy. President I don't, she, I don't think she would have settled with Senator <laughs> <laughs> She wanted to be like governor. Ever? I wanted to be Senator Harbaugh. <laughs> I wanted to be Governor Harbaugh. So John graduated. President Harbaugh. John graduated from Miami and he came home and it was in the summertime, it was in July, and Jackie goes, she's on the, we have mashed potatoes and we had a nice meal and Jackie said, well, John, what law school is it going to be? And John looked over, he said, Mom, I think I want to be a coach. And Jackie went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to that her face went into the mashed potatoes. <laughs> she claimed she never made the mashed potatoes, but I'm telling you, she made the mashed potatoes. <laughs> And so he, he came to Western for three years as a graduate assistant and lived with us. We paid him no money. Food, had a room, had a bed. Didn't have a car, did you? No, you, you drove to work with you. You had a car. And Jim? What would Jim like? I think Jim kind of made the declaration early and took it out of our hands. He, his comment was he started to play at, at Michigan, he was, then he went into the pros, and his line was? I'm going to play as long as I can, then coach, and then die. <laughs> so we kind of re kind of came to the resolution that was, way, that was the way it was going to be, and we gave him no other options, or he had no other options.